Oh, no. Thank you so much for joining Misiata de Shvai, the Inner Dimension Shear, that we're going to begin momentarily. We're still waiting for some other Chavar to join. Wow, yo, I haven't seen that face in a while. So good to see you. Hope everything is well. So just going to finish setting some things up, and then we're going to jump into the teachings. Mamash, a remarkable, remarkable learning tonight. <clears throat> Misiata de Shvai. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen so that we can see the sources together. And let's dive into it. We have, is there some a lot to do? Three teachings that we're going to try to get to with the help of the Master of the World of Parsha Shlach as we stand on the threshold of yet another Shabbos Kodesh, what a privilege, at the end of a long week. And there's no better way to prepare than by delving in deeply to the teachings of the Tzaddikim. I have to share my screen again. I apologize. <clears throat> I have to move the admit button out of the same place as the stop share button. So I keep on doing that. And share screen. Okay. Okay. So we have three teachings tonight just to map out what we're going to be doing together. The first teaching from the Meyashi Loach is sort of a sin, standalone piece that's going to speak about the general mistake of the Miraglim and what Moshe Rabbeinu hoped that they would see and what ultimately they weren't able to see and what kind of practical implication that holds for our own of Hashem. That's a standalone piece. And then with the help of the master of the world, we're going to delve deeply into a teaching from the Svas Emes and a remarkably related teaching from the Ishvitzer in a different place, also in Parsha Shlach, still admitting people, that is going to enable us to see a whole different dimension of the Svas Emes. It's Mamish a really, really special lima to learn these two pieces in tandem with one another. Okay, so let's jump right into it for the to the first teaching from the tzaddik. We'll try to get through this one a little bit more quickly because the ikr is the second two pieces. By Yedab El Shem Al Moshe Lemar, Agadish Baruch Hu speaks to Moshe in the beginning of this week's parsha, packed parsha, parsha of tzitzis, because just eats him. So much going on, so much to focus on, but we're going to focus on the Indian of the Miraglim. By Yedab El Shem Al Moshe Lemar, Agadish Baruch Hu speaks to Moshe, and he tells him Shlach Lecha Noshim. Send out for you, Rashi says, Ladaitcha, Kadesh Baruch Hu didn't command this. It was sort of Moshe Rabbeinu's own initiative based on the request of the people to send these scouts, to send these spies. The Asuru as Eretz Kanan, that they should go and, and ultimately tour. I think the English word tour comes from the word by Asuru, to tour, right? Tough Reish is to tour. To go ahead and to scout out Eretz, Eretz Kanan, Eretz Yisrael, that ultimately they were on the threshold of entering. Right after Matan Torah, that was their direct destination. You get the Torah and you go straight into Eretz Yisrael. By Yeshu, right? By Yeshu Mitura Aretz Mikates Arbaim Yaim. The guy remembered at the end of the pasuk, they were, or the end of that parsha, they returned after forty days of their having traveled the land and ultimately delivered a horrible report that Kaliv and Yeshua quieted them down and 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 Mamish countered them by saying, not only are they wrong, but Toiva Aretz Ma'oid Ma'oid. Right? This land is phenomenally good. What's going on here? Zesha Amra Kosov says, Tehillim Gitzadik, this is what the Pasik says, and Tehillim Gal Enai. HaKadosh Baruch Hu opened my eyes, the Abita, and let me see the flois mitarasecha, the wonders of your Torah. Joey Nukem has such a beautiful song about this. Gal Enai, open our eyes to see the wonders of the Torah. Isab Zara Kadesh, and the Tehillim Gitzadik Kadesh in Parshas Baaloisla says, Man de Tchois Levusha de Araisa. Let me perceive, based on this pasuk, Gal Enai, open my eyes to see the nefla'ais madet chois levusha da aray. So let me grasp that which is underneath the garments of the Torah, underneath the outside, underneath the simple gufe halachas, the physical aspect of the practical how, what, when, where, the practical aspects of living. Let me grasp the neshama, the neshmasa de oraisa. Let me grasp the the hamalame Torah la ami Yisrael. That's underneath the garment of the Tairak Tashem. Ki shoyrish Eretz Yisrael, says the Ishvitzer, the absolute root, the spiritual core of Eretz Yisrael, he shemafurish ba hadivri Tairak, is that Eretz Yisrael is bound up with the soul of Tairak. Without getting into the whole thing now, it's a very deep Indian, but the panemius of Har Sinai is already Harabais. What comes first? 
What are we introduced to first? Who are we introduced to first? Long before we get introduced to a Moshe Rabbeinu, long before there's an Indian of Yitzhak Mitzrayim and gathering around our Sinai and getting ready to prepare to receive the Torah and ultimately being the Kabbal of the Torah, we get to know the Avis HaKadoshim who are connected and bound to Har Habayis. Avraham, the Gemara tells us, Avraham referred to the Har Habayis as Har Yitzchak Kare Sada, but Yitzchak Yitzchak Lasuach Basada was the Makam Mikdash. And Yaakov Abinu's dream is also the Makam Mikdash, where he calls it Ein Zeki and Beis Elikin, the house. We get to know Har Habayis long before. The world was created ultimately in the Indian of Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is bound up with the creation of the world. That's our Taina to the world. That our connection to Eretz Yisrael is. In as much as HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, we have Shaykhis to Eretz Yisrael. Harabayis is the Indian of Tefillah. Harabayis is the Indian of Adam Arishan, all the way in the beginning, davening for rain, that there was no person, La Abdul, La Shamra, say Chazal, what's Avoida, what's Avda, Evoida Shabalev, have you ever used Tefillah, the Avoida of the Karbanis that's connected to Tefillah? Tefillah, Harabayis, creation is the Panemius of Harsinai, which is the Gufe Halachis, which is the external aspect of relating to HaKadosh Baruch Hu through the do's and the don'ts, but Harsina, Harabayis rather, is the essential connection. Is, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu create the world? Bishvil Yisrael Shenikru Reishis, long before a Torah. That same Chazal says, Bishvil Atar Shenikru Reishis, Enechanami. But the essence of it is Yisrael Allah B'machshav Atchila. It was for an Am Yisrael that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had in mind to create the world. Creation started from where, says the Medjush Tanchuma, the Makam HaMikdash, the Evan Shesir. The base HaMikdash, Eretz Yisrael, is bound up with Madet Chos Levusha De'orai. So what's underneath the do's and don'ts? What's underneath the parameters of our Jewishness that so often takes the form of a conditional relationship that if I'm doing certain things, I'm connected. If I'm not doing certain things, I'm not connected, which is true on a level. On the level of gufe halachas, that's true. There is there is a factual, uh, you know, ability to measure a person's own bechira choices, connectivity, how much a person's working on oneself. There is a chilik in that standpoint. But bepnimius, on the inside, madat chois levusha the araisa, is the inyan of harabayis karav Hashem lechol karav hakadosh baruch who is equally close to every person who calls out to him and adarava. Karav Hashem Lenishbari Leif. It's to the people that are struggling, to the people that feel as if they're failing in the aspect of the gufe halachas. Those are the people that are able to tap very deeply back into the essence. Those are the people that hang out in creation, that go out for a spider and pour out their broken hearts before the master of the world, that are able to draw from the Indian of creation, to draw from the Indian of the renewal, the racious, base racious, two beginnings, the Indian of Rosh Hashanah, the Ayon Haras Oilam, the Indian of the creation of the world that's bound up to tefillah, where we can all find ourselves once again, that place where we're essentially connected, where we can do nothing to sever our relationship, where our relationship with the Kaddish Baruch is not dependent on any factor, where we're a part of him and he's a part of us. Again, the essence of Eretz Yisrael and what this land represents, and that's why it's so futile to try to get involved in proving, you know, based on how, how long we've lived here and we had our capital here and historical facts of how we conquered this place and we won wars legitimately and we were even given the land, that, you know, the, the Balfour Declaration and so on and so forth. And all of these things is the chitzonius of the chitzonius of the chitzonius of Am Yisrael's kesher to Eretz Yisrael. It's something that itself essentially is l'malami tamadas. Nothing could explain it. If we could explain it, we would already be limiting it. There's no explanation. What do Chazal mean? And I've said this in the past. We've learned this together in the past. What do Chazal mean when they tell us that Kodesh Baruch Hu created the world and right away in the beginning, we don't begin with the first mitzvah like Rashi brings down right in the beginning of Bereshit, but rather what do we begin with? Not a Chodesh Hazalachem. With the first mitzvah, we begin the first overt mitzvah. We begin with the creation of the world, says Rashi, why? Because there's going to come a time where the nations of the world are going to challenge our kesher to the land. What's our answer? God created the world. It's his, and he gave us this land. What kind of taina is that? Right? Who, who, who's going to, who's that going to hold up in front of? In, what, in which UN meeting are they going to say, oh, you're right. I'm saying, what, what what's the cheshbin? But it's more for us than it is for them. It's more to fortify our ferocity in the sense of our determination to stay connected because what do Chazal mean when they put together the Indian of our Kesher to Eretz Yisrael and the Indian of the creation of the world? You know what it is? 
the concept of undeserving. HaKadosh Baruch who created the world long before there was anyone to deserve creation. HaKadosh Baruch who created the world in and of his own volition, of his own desire to have a world to be mated. Say Chazal, that deep desire of an unconditional feeling that Hashem had to create the world to be made to be of, that's connected and that's synonymous with the Kaddish Baruch Hu's decision to give Am Yisrael a Kesher to Eretz Yisrael at the same Bechina in the sense that this is not something that's deserved. And if it's not something that's deserved, then it's a Kesher we can never lose. The same way the creation of the world took place in such an Indian, where it was a Kaddish Baruch Hu deciding just to do it, nothing that we deserved or earned, we couldn't have earned it, we didn't yet exist. And a Kaddish Baruch Hu had this dream and a vision of, the, of, of even the simplest Jew, saying the simplest parak of Tehillim with a broken heart, a person that's not holding in the Gufei Allahs, but a person who's just mom is trying the best that he possibly can or that she possibly can. And a Kaddish who had this vision and he created the world. That's how Chazal wanted to frame Am Yisrael's Kesher to Eretz Yisrael. This has nothing to do with a real estate, you know, being able to prove that we have a Kesher and that it has nothing to do. It's It's not because we earned it. If we limit our connection to Eretz Yisrael because we earned it and we built a state and we and, and legally, then it's it's mamish. We we so much truncate the depth of our Kesher. The truth is, is that it's essential. So Eretz Yisrael is connected to the Indian Shemefurish Bad the Retira, the Panemius of Tyra's Nisgal of Eretz Yisrael. And her cook spoke so often about these two tenuas, these two movements in Am Yisrael over the past 200 years, the movement back to Eretz Yisrael by hook or by crook, obviously a little, little bit of a bidiyevit sort of way from a religious standpoint that there was a secular state and even now with the government and the politics here and things that are going on and trends and in, in a certain way, it's a, it was a tragedy. And obviously there, there were G'daylim, perhaps even the majority of G'daylim that felt that way. But you can't argue with the fact that Tachlis, there's more Liman Atar being learned now in Eretz Yisrael than ever before. And who would be the one to say it would be better if that hadn't have happened? HaGadosh Baruch Hu is moving history in the way that he's moving history. Or Cook saw this as the Mashiach Ben Yosef. That's a Kli, a vessel for the Mashiach Ben David, even if we're not able to understand how HaGadosh Baruch Hu is Mahalich and why Dafka this way and so on and so forth. Tachlis, Kacha, that's how it is. Rav Kook saw the return to the physical land, as well as the return to Panimia Satira as being one and the same. I write about this in a lengthy footnote in chapter 15 of the story of our lives, where I go very, very deeply into the Kesher between Tyrus Eretz Yisrael and the physical return to Eretz Yisrael. These are, it's the goof and the neshama of one thing, the movement back to the essence of Yiddishkeit at the very end of time. We're coming back to the core, our chevra, these chevra, we're coming back to the core, the essence. So Eretz Yisrael is that place. The concept of tmidus, the concept of something that can't be broken, of a relationship that can't be severed, of the essence of the essence of the way in which HaKadosh Baruch Hu is bound up with each and every Jew, b'shayrish, b'pnimius, tamid. V'lachayim. He says, anybody that tried to live in the land, that tried to be making, tried to set something up that ultimately lasted, it had to be in, in correlation and in conjunction to the Torah Kedoshah, because Eretz Yisrael is a land of Torah. It's a land of Emunah, even the simplest people here. Chazal tell us, Shechan Eretz, a Pazik can tell him, Rabbi Nachman, Shechan Eretz, live in the land of Re'e Emunah, Kal Hadar Ba'aretz, this is a land that's filled with the spirit of godliness. The ultimately, they're deep, they're deep, they're hidden under so many details and disparate laws and concepts, but the neshama, the neshmasa de oraisa. He says on the surface, the Torah could look like a tremendous yoke, a tremendous obligation, tremendously restrictive. It's difficult to keep the Torah. It can seem bitter. It can seem painful. The do's and the don'ts, the rules, the laws. And this is how oftentimes our children feel, how oftentimes we feel, that the Torah is a big, fat burden. Rahman al-Islam. But he says the person that's seeking God Mispalel will begin to dab into the beginning of Eretz Yisrael is the Indian of Tfila. Basically, based Tfila Yikar Lachala Amim. Eretz Yisrael is Tfila. 
the tefillahs are connected to the Avos, the Avos are in the Indian of Eretz Yisrael. Such a person davens to Hashem is Barashi, a gala eno. Open my eyes, v'yabed niflois mitaraisa, and allow me to see the wonders in Gitar madet chois levusha diaraisa. Allow me to taste the sweetness, the Indian of derachea darchi noyam, the place where I can feel you in the Torah, where I can sit and learn, not just with my Chavrusa, but with you, that you're the third partner in that relationship. Where I can feel you in keeping the dinim of Torah, where I can feel the sweetness of a life that's lived in self-control, in parameters, no matter how you know antithetical to society, modern society, societal um, sensitivities this may seem and how ancient and outdated there's a sweetness there's a wisdom there's an ancient objective morality in Torah that that sweetens every moment of life allow me to feel that and at that moment I'll see that all there is 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 love and whereas Chazal in Nigle might refer to the Tariag mitzvahs as tzivuyim, as commandments, chukim, mishpatim, the Zara Kaddish, the Nishmasit Yaraisa, refers to those very same 613 rules as 613 atim Yaraisa, 613 eight so pieces of advice. Of course, they're enforced. Akadosh Baruch is serious about wanting us to live the best possible life. They're enforced. 365 ways of getting close to God by not doing certain things, 248 ways of getting close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu by doing certain things. That's the Pneumius. There's nothing sweeter. Toicham Ratzuf Av. So he says, Moshe yearned for the Meraglim to go into Eretz Yisrael and to see the Pneumius of the land, to look beyond what they perceived as being physical, natural threats. We're going to get to that Be'ez Hashem and the Svasemis in a few minutes. And to look at the Pneumius, she says, Vayasuru. Look deep. Behem asu chen. Behem asu chen, he says, if they had done that, Hayoroyim, they would have seen Sheba Oimek who Malay Taif. But Oimek, which is what Eretz Yisrael stands for, that paradoxically, paradoxically and counterintuitively, oftentimes it's the very thing which serves as the symbol for Panemius that itself has a klipa around it, that you need a break. And you need to find the Panemius within the Panemius. You need to find the Nakuda Tova within the Nakuda Tova. And so Moshe Rabbeinu you know, hoped that they would be supercharged with Eretz Yisrael Dika eyes. The ability to see deeper. The imasu chen hayeroyim, they would have seen sheba oimikum alitoyv. Achem estak lurak alalavush. But the Miraglim's mistake was they looked at Eretz Yisrael like a land like any other and started to appraise it based on the actual factual details of is this a place that's easy to conquer, not easy to conquer, and so on and so forth without realizing that this has nothing to do with us being deserving. It has nothing to do with the natural ability to overcome these nations and these giants and, and, and the harsh conditions, whatever it was that they perceived. Our Kesher to Eretz Yisrael is a Kesher Pnimi, is a Kesher that has nothing to do with any details or facts. It's Lamalamitam Vadas, it's the Indian of Chain, the Indian of Chinam. That Am Yisrael have grace in the eyes of Hashem, it's unexplainable, it's the Indian of Chinam, Chain. And they saw that this is a land that eats up its inhabitants. If they had stopped, and if they had seen this as being an objective issue as opposed to a, I'm sorry, a subjective issue as opposed to being a, an objective reality, and they had daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Yibane Shalom, Gal Einai, Sheyi Gal Einon, that their eyes should be open, V'yur Neflois Mitarasai, that they should see beyond the, Levush, the garment of the Torah, Asikiru, they would have recognized instantly. They would have seen the Kesher. They would have seen what Eretz Yisrael held for them. And it's the same way with us. Mamash, this is such an important rule. And about us Hashem in life, Bechlau. In different areas of our lives, we are traveling toward a promised land. And that echo that came out first to Avram Avinu, the very first Jew, echoes within all of our hearts, Lech Lecha. And we're on a journey and we're looking for that place. And oftentimes the Meshilach is telling us we get there. We're standing there. We're standing in the field of our dreams. 
We're standing in the ideal of all ideal circumstances. And simply because we refuse to entertain the fact that it might be our way of looking at it, it might be the lenses with which our glasses are outfitted as opposed to the actual nature of what it is that we're looking at that prevents us from accessing it. And if instead we were to open up our mouths to HaKadosh Baruch and say, I've done all that I can, and I'm trying my best. Gal Einai. Let me not make the mistake of attributing my difficulty to the Torah or to the journey or to our life itself. Open my eyes. It's there. Everything that we're looking for is here. Outside of our own personal experiences, but there are cloud in life, in the world, and I've said this also in the past, all the pieces of the puzzle are in the box. It's up to us to put it together. This world is not essentially hell or evil. It's not. This world could be a very, very wonderful, sweet place if we believed in it. If all of us as humanity believed that we could manifest the ultimate psukim describing the time period of Mashiach to Canaan when there's universal shalom and hakara of a creator and so on and so forth. If we got together and we stopped trying to kill each other and hate and judge and so on, if we each and every one of us individually made this decision, we can manifest that. We're standing already in Mashiach Zaitan. It's our problem, not the problem of the object, objective reality. There are extenuating circumstances. Obviously, this isn't a, you know, an ironclad rule. There are challenges that we face. But B'derach Klal, if we take this approach and we're ready to daven, and we're ready to entertain, again, the possibility out of our humility that it could be something that it's, it's us, right? It's me, not, not you, not the relationship. Things could be different. That's the, and that's the message of the Miraglim and the beauty of understanding our eternal Kesher to Eretz Yisrael and the messages that Eretz Yisrael holds for us. That's the first piece. So now for the Iker, we're going to focus on the Svas Emes and then delve into the second piece from the Meashiloach, which really ties into the Svas Emes and adds a whole new dimension in a brilliant, beautiful way. So the Miraglim come back and they were only looking the Chitzanias. They didn't find the Panemius, which is what Eretz Yisrael represents, Klape Chutzla Aretz, or Klape Harsinai, Klape Nigla. And they give this horrible report, terrible things, giants, and difficulty, and, and, and huge fruits, and it's uninhabitable. And Kolev stands up, the Pasik tells us, by Pasik, by Yas Kolev Asa'am, and Kolev Mamish, like, shuts them up, he, he quiets them down, El Moshe. Before, in front of Moshe, it's an interesting lashem where the Svas Emes is going to focus on that. What's by Yas Kaliv Asa'am El Moshe? What does that mean? He quieted them down to Moshe. Kaliv was the one then who spoke. What does this mean? He quieted them down to Moshe. We're going to see. And he says, Oli Nale, we're going to absolutely take over. We're going to go up. We're going to conquer. It's an excellent land. Toiva Arts Ma'id Ma'id. Perish Rashi Zalam. Rashi tells us based on Hazal, Me'a Medrash. Afilu Oimar Lanu Asu Sulamas, but all of the Rakia. Even if Moshe Rabbein would have told us, start building ladders and we're going up to Shemaim, like you know, the Migdal Babel the Kedusha, the Rashi finishes, we would be successful, we would make it. And again, Chazal or Darshani based on this interesting Lashen, by Yas Kalevis Am El Moshe, meaning that his quieting down of the people had to do with the stature of Moshe Rabbi, you know, and how much he believed in the car, in the Koyach of Moshe. So it was Vayas Kalev Asa'am, El Moshe, Chazal already picking up on that. And they say that it's all this chus of Moshe. If Moshe would have told us to do something actually impossible, like building ladders and climbing up to heaven, which is obviously not a possibility, we would do it. Not only would we do it, or should we do it, we would be successful. What does this mean? Listen to this, Fas Emes, it's deeper. Mamish, it's so deep. Ha'inin who the tzaddik tells us the inin is as follows. Ki bevada ya maraglin hevinu the maraglin understood v'ra'u and they perceived ki lo yigia ha'es l'reshes as ha'aretz the time had not yet arrived for them to go ahead and to conquer the land. They knew they were big tzaddikim. We think the maraglin were a bunch of rabble rousers. This wasn't adas kairach and even kairach, right? But 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 the inin of the maraglin these were these were these were gedolim. These were chiefs. These were alufim. These were the sarim. And they understood that in the grand scheme of things, either Baruch Kadsham or it wasn't the time yet. And Tachlis, 
it Taka wasn't the time. How do we know it wasn't the time? Because bottom line is they only got in 40 years later. And we believe that everything that's written in the Torah is preordained that Kaddish Baruch Hu had a cheshbin from beginning to end. And the taka wasn't the time for them to go in. We're going to see more on this in the Mea Shilach. Kasher be'emes, kachoya. And the Tzvah Emes says, we actually see that that's what happened. Now, it's a little bit funny because it's, it's, it's like, it's like a... a um, it's like a paradox, right? Because where does it start? The Meraglim saw that they weren't going to go in because Tachlis, they didn't end up going in for 40 years. Well, why didn't they go in for 40 years? Because the Meraglim messed up, right? So where does it start? It's it's like circular reasoning. But Be'emes Kachoya, Sarech Lios Oid Mem Shana Bemidbar. They were meant to have stayed 40 more years in the desert. And so they went in already to sabotage this plan in order to be mechamed to the Omek Ratzon Hashem as a, in, in the way that they perceived it, because it was not yet time. says, but I wrote in another place, Al to explain the Pasuk in Kayales Lachkols Man Va'es. There is a time for everything, Tachas Kol Hashemayim, underneath the heavens. And the Svas Emes says there, he says it in a number of places, that's only tachas shamayim, like kol zman ve'ez. Tachas. But lemala mi shamayim, k'moysha yedara midbar, nimshachem achra anhagaz moysha rabbin alav shalom, shahoy ridlanu tayr mena shamayim, v'anhagaz zuhi lemala mi ha'teva v'schal kuzi itim ha'zman. Lemala mena shamayim, in the aspect of moysha rabbeinu, that's kashur, to Shemayim, that's Moira, that brings down Torim and Hashemayim, that goes up to Shemayim for 40 days. Mi Yalulana Hashemayim. That Moish Rabbeinu goes up and spends 40 days in Shemayim to receive the Torah. Only Tachas Hashemayim, like Kol Zman Ve'ez. Lemalim in Hashemayim, there's no time. And even something that's going to be experienced under this, under the experience and dimension of time in a linear sense that it's not here yet. Lemalim in Hashemayim, it's already here. It's already here. And that's Moshe Rabbeinu's Indian, that Moshe's kashur to that which is lamalam and Hashemayim. It's only tachas Hashemayim that like calls man be'is lamalam and Hashemayim. Moshe Rabbeinu tarim and Hashemayim. You could you could manifest the future even now. Lochein akol emes ki al piateva lo higia ha'es. In accordance with the reasoning of the Meraglim, they were taka right. It was not yet time to go in. They were supposed to have waited another forty years. But if they had bound themselves to the tzaddik, if they had trusted in Moshe Rabbeinu's desire to manifest the future now, if they had been makasher to the ruach of this tzaddik that was bound, we talked about a skasher tzaddik, I think last week or two weeks ago, that, that the tzaddik is connected to the Indian of Shemayim, which is above the realm of time, both could have been true at once. They could have entered now, and it would have been 40 years later. They could have gone in right away. They would have tapped into a realm above nature. And whatever reason it was necessary for it to be 40 years as it plays out underneath time would have been accomplished right then and there. The Zesha Kosov, and that's why Kalev says, and the Pasuk tells us, Vayas, Kalev shuts them up, El Moshe. Olanala, he says, we're going to go up. As we are right now, not 40 years later. Even though right now we don't have the power. That's why he uses the Lush and El Moshe, because the whole thing is Taloi on the Iskashas to the Tzadik. That without the Tzadik, you cannot go in now. And you're talking right that we need to wait 40 years. But if you had connected to the Tzadik, to Moshe, and if you had heeded his decree, even though it seems counterintuitive and it doesn't seem to fit, you go in. Vayas El Moshe. And that's what Rashi tells us, even if you would tell us Asu Sulamais, to go up to Shemayim. What's, what's what Sulamais? I mean, he couldn't have given any other interesting, difficult thing to do. What, what's Davka, the example of building Sulamais to Shemayim? Now we understand. Because he was telling them, Hebra, 
You know why we're going to be able to go into Eretz Yisrael now? Because Moish Rabbeinu is essentially telling us, trust me, build ladders up to Shemayim, follow me up the mountain into Shemayim, above the place where it's only like Kolzman ve'es mitachas ha-Shemayim. Follow me to the place where I can bring you above time, where you can actualize any benefit of waiting 40 years right now. Come up with me, build ladders, come up beyond the Shemayim. Asusu lamais, v'chal ha-shlichus ha-yerak mitzad this whole thing was Moshe's was Moshe's Geshev. A tragic thing. And you see how much a skashras to Sadiqim is the Yisoyed of Yiddishkeit. The Yisoyed, Rabbi Nachman says the Yisoyed Akal. The, the hakal, a person could be living mamish, a full life, Torah and mitzvahs and so on and so forth, without a skashras to the tzaddik, there's an element that's missing. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the Torah through a Sarasur, through Moshe Rabbeinu. He wanted it that way. And in every generation, we have tzaddikim that are similarly bringing down new giluyim of Torah to us. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants that we should be medabic in him. How are we medabic in HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Ubay Sidvak says the Gemara in multiple places, Saita and other places. How could a person be medabic to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? The Pasuk says Hashem is a fire. Medabik, bimidoisa, but also to Tamidah Chachamim. And the more a person is Medabik in Tamidah Chachamim and Sadiqim, he's Medabik in the Shechina Kadosha. So many different Chazals. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted it this way. Vayaminu Bashem, Uvemoisha Avda. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants it this way. Listen to this. Vim Hayu Nechnasim Be'emes, if they had gone in with Emuna, there would be no more gallus. Just like the Torah, that the reason that the Torah is going to remain forever is because of Moshe Rabbeinu, that he channeled the Torah from a place, Memela, the Torah is eternal, it lasts forever, everybody knows that Rav Shimon Barichai is the Neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu, is another Giloi of that generational Neshama that comes in a couple of times throughout history, Ultimately, obviously, from the Breslov standpoint, Breslovers believe that Rabbi Nachman was that final giloy of the tzaddik, but Rabbi Shimon certainly, the Arizal, the Balshem HaKadosh, all these, what are called the de Hadoris, that came down to bring Yiddishkeit to the, to the next stage and to change the game, like Rabbi Shimon did. And Rabbi Shimon was the one we know who said this and who promised that the Torah would never be forgotten. Why? It's Mikoyach of Moshe Rabbeinu that this Neshama is able to go Lamalam and Azman and is able to bring something down to us that's eternal. And if we had gone into Eretz Yisrael the first time, Bikoyach of the Tzaddik, we would never have left because it would have shared in the eternal aspect of the Tzaddik's ability to go to the Indian of Panemius, to the Indian of that world that's beyond what we can see with our own eyes. And we would have stayed there forever, forever. Right? We know that a Kaddish Baruch Hu said, ah, you're crying. When, when was it that they came back and they gave the report? It was Tishba. That laid the foundation for Galos. Svas Emes explains why. No, it wasn't Stam. Oh, you're crying now for nothing. I'm going to give you Bechil Adairis. I don't want to lose the flow, but I want to tell you a, a very interesting insight just on that, Mamre Chazal, because that's an interesting thing. That a Kaddish Baruch Hu said, oh, now you're crying for no reason. Vani ek b'lechem Bechil Adairis. So I'm going to institute on this day crying for generations who know that the first and second Bate Mikdash were destroyed on, uh, on, on Tisha B'Av, I think something with World War II. There was a big date that had to do with the beginning of the, of, of, of the end for European Jewry was also on, on, uh, on Tisha B'Av. Throughout our history, this has been a, a tragic month, a tragic month. But wouldn't it be more fitting for our Baruch Hu says, now to the miraculum, you're crying You're crying a, 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 a crying for nothing. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna make that you should cry for a real reason. Right or something like that. We don't find that the bechia the fact that they were crying over nothing, over a dimyan, that that was taken out of the equation when in the context of the future bechias that they would be crying. In a certain way, our crying on all tishavavs is is also a bechia of In a certain way. 
And as much as we perceive the destruction as how could this be and the tragedies that we go through and our mourning, it still shares in the same in the same mistake of the miraculum going back to the, I'm saying something very deep now, going back to the Indian of the of the Ishbitzer, that it was only the Lavush, but the Pinimius. There was no Bechia. The Pneumius, there's nothing. The Pneumius, there's no Gullus. The Pneumius, the Chule, the Chule, the Chule, and so on and so forth. So it's a very interesting construct in the Maimar Chazal. I hope I'm getting this point across. It's a little bit uh, abstract. But in the same way that the first Bechia was the Chinam, so too all future cryings on Tisha B'av also shared in that Chinam aspect. Because again, it's only on the Shirish. Eretz Yisrael is Pneumius. Eretz Yisrael teaches us how to look beyond the tragedy that appears in the outside and to go with Emunah. And it's difficult and it's tough and we're human beings and we're supposed to mourn and we're supposed to grieve and we're supposed to challenge and struggle but we make it in the end we make it because we connect to that place that's beyond that place of emuna so that's a, a, very, a very interesting point but the svas ms is explaining over here what's the kesher ma kesher to the pagama the miraglim and tisha and the destruction of the bisamiktas but the way he's explaining it it's posh it. it's because of them that there was ever a concept or a havamina that the bisamiktas could be destroyed and that we could go into galas because if they had gone in on Moshe's charge, and they had believed in the tzaddik, even though from their own union of, 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 of Ruach HaKodesh, they perceived that it wasn't the right time. They needed 40 years. If they had gone in with the koyach of the tzaddik, they could have achieved that 40-year jump with everything that would have been attained, and it would have been ludicrous because they would have drawn it down from the eternal place of above Shemaim, not constricted by la kolzman ve'es tachas ha-shemaim. Haremes canal shalule chetam without the, the chet of the of the miraglim loy hoya nechrav a mikdash canal. What a piece from the svas emes. But the main shilah takes it like ten steps deeper. Listen to this piece. This is mamish a classic, classic piece from the main shilah. Mamish a classic. Inyan chet hamiraglim. He says, let's speak a little bit about the chet hamiraglim, which. There are so many different approaches to, but obviously we, we we have to understand what they were in what their intention was. It wasn't stam that they wanted to sabotage the trajectory of Am Yisrael. They, they had no reason to want to do so. The only point that they were taken out of Eretz of Mitzrayim was Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael. Why would they want to sabotage that and stay in the midbar? They had to have a cheshbon. What was the cheshbon? What was the stam fear? Kavanasam hoya be emes l'shem shemayim. Says the Me'ashilach, it was Mam Shalshem Shemayim. Listen to the Cheshbon that he makes. It's mind-blowing. V'hoya Avera L'shma, he says. It was an Avera L'shma from their perspective that this was something they needed to do for the ultimate betterment of the circumstance. Why? Because they knew absolute clear with clarity. They knew that Moshe Rabbeinu was not allowed to go into Eretz Yisrael, that after the main Mariva hitting the rock, he was prevented from going in. That's also a very deep thing based on our understanding of what Eretz Yisrael is. Why did the main Mariva, with all of what that was, first you have to understand main Mariva, what was the Kesha that that should prevent Moshe from going into Eretz Yisrael? What did he do that would prevent him from having access to this land? And what was the nature of the Mimariva? What's the nature of Eretz Yisrael? And why don't those two things go together? Why was that a why was that a punishment for that, right? Or a punishment. Why was that an effect ultimately or a tikkun for what he had done on his level? But be that as it may, the miraculum knew that Moshe is not going to make it, and they knew that if we go in, if Am Yisrael steps into the border now, Moshe dies. The Gamzoisia, when they knew another Mahalach, they knew something else, and this is a fascinating thing. Mom is deep. She is the Gemara, and you have to see the Meshulach is such a thinker. He's so deep. The, the, the Gemara says in the Zara, like The Gemara says a rule: a person does not understand or fully comprehend the depth of the Rebbe's teaching until learning with the Rebbe for forty years. At Arben Shnin, you spend forty years learning from a person, you could start to be oimid under under das. That's what the Gemara says. How does the Gemara know this? Listen to this, because so deep. The Gemara knows this from the fact. That right before Moshe Rabbeinu actually was going to leave the world, and the parshas the very end, Vayela Chazinu, those parshas the very end, all the way at the end of the Torah, where Moshe Rabbeinu said, "Now you know Hayoyim." Not Hatarisal Adas, another pasuk um, that's slipping my mind. But the, but the pasuk says Hayoyim. Say Chazal, it was only that day after learning with Moshe for forty years that Am Yisrael understood what he had been trying to convey to them. That's where Chazal learned this from. 
Says the Meashiloach, very nice the Chazal learned that from the Pasuk of what actually ended up happening, but the Meraglim knew this essentially. Lachain, his Chachma Eitza. So the Meraglim had an Eitza la'akev bias ha'aretz to prevent Am Yisrael from going into the land to keep Moshe Rabbeinu alive for 40 years, which they were able to into it, would have been the, the, the punishment. Again, Chazal learned that, that you can only know something from a Rebbe after 40 years because that's that's what happened. But that's only what happened because the Meraglim engineered this knowing that not, you understand this, right? It's not simply that Chazal learned it from the actual facts that they spent 40 years with Moshe Rabbeinu. And so from there they know that a person can be Oyman al das Rabbi after 40 years. The Meraglim knew that this is a cloud and they engineered this to keep Moshe alive so that they could continue learning with him for 40 years to be Oyman al das Rabbi and then to go into the earth. His This piece is unbelievable. So they should be able to understand the depth of his teaching. And Tachlis, and this is the most amazing thing, they were right. Tachlis, the only reason that we had Moshe Rabbeinu for 40 years is because of their mistake. If Am Yisrael had gotten in then, Moshe Rabbeinu would have, would have dropped that on Har Nevoi right then. What was their mistake? Why was Hashem upset at them? Listen to this. They made a mistake. This is kashur to the Svas Emes. So deep. What was their mistake? But this was still considered a chayyach. It's almost the same thing as the Svas Emes. Hashem says, I can do it all. I'm the kol yachal. Even with the klal of needing another 40 years to be able to go ahead and learn from Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, Hashem says, is it beyond me to make these two things work out? That you should go in right now, Moshe Rabbeinu should die without the 40 years, and you should still gain what you needed. You see, it's the mamas, the parallel from the Svas Emes. The Svas Emes learns it in the Koyach of the Tzaddik to draw down Tamadas, that whatever was to be gained, what was to be gained? Says the, says the Meashiloch, you know what was to be gained? 40 years with Moshe. This is so deep because it was Moshe Rabbeinu's own Indian based on Asfas MS that was giving them this Hasaga of being able to reach beyond. They want, I can't even, again, they wanted, this is so deep, they wanted to be to 40 years so that they should be Zoycha to Moshe Rabbeinu's consciousness. But Moshe Rabbeinu's whole consciousness is that you don't need 40 years because I could channel HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Indian of Kali Yachal to give you my consciousness in the moment. And if you would have just gone in, you would have been Zoycha to my consciousness, which is that you don't have to wait actually 40 years because you can have everything right now. That's the omic of what's happening here. By putting the, these two pieces together, you gain such an amkus into what exactly was going on here. It's mamish the most tragic misunderstanding. The Miraglim wanted 40 years more because they believed that it takes 40 years to be Oymar Das Rabbi. What's the Das Rabbi? The Das Rabbi is that you don't need 40 years because I could bring it into you right now. If they had gone in right away, they would have been Zeichet to it in, in, the, in, in a flash, in a moment. Because Moshe Rabbeinu is Lamalam and Ateva. That was the consciousness they were yearning for. And ultimately they got it 40 years later, but it was, it was far too late by then. It was far too late. Deeper than it was far too late. I want to see something even deeper than that. And this is this is not so much in the in, in the actual context of this teaching, but the Preet Sadik says, the Heilige Preet Sadik, I'll check the chat. I apologize, sometimes it's hard for me to do both at once. Yeah, wow, wow, yeah. <laughs> you just you can say that again and again and again. But the Indian, listen to this one. Ritzadik says, and this is a very deep and a long conversation, we don't have time for this now, but I bring this also in the book uh, in chapter 17 and 18, we go at length about the concept of Yidiyah and the Chira. Ritzadik says that the Das of Moshe Rabbeinu is the Das of Yidiyah. The Das, the ability to know that whatever a person did, even if it wasn't exactly right and a person utilized his own experience of a Chira negatively, ultimately, ultimately, on the ultimate level, there exists a place where it's justified. There exists a place where there was really no Bechira and it was supposed to bring you to this place of, 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 of Shiver and Leif so that you can have an expanse across which, uh, you know, across which you need to strive to, to, to traverse and to get to the other side and to create the space for the journey, Bechulei, and so on and so forth. I don't want to give too much away in the context of the book for those who haven't, uh, who haven't read it yet or aren't there yet in the book. But Rav Tzadik says this was the Das of the Rebbe, of Moshe Rabbeinu. 
This means to say that 40 years later, when they got the Das of Moshe, then in a moment they realized that they had made the correct decision. So all of this is happening in their own Bechira, where it appears that there was a Chet, because from their perspective, they didn't choose the L'Chadchila option of trusting Moshe in the moment and going in, when they would have been Zoycha to everything in that moment, that it is possible to attain the Das, because that would have been in and of itself the Das, if they had just accepted they didn't need the time, because Moshe is L'mal the Das. But 40 years later, Tachlis, which is where Chazal learned this from, that you can only be Oymid al Das Rabbi after 40 years, well, they learned that from the reality of that's the way that things happen. But at that moment, they realized that this was part of the process in and of itself. So they did get Das Moshe, a different aspect of Das Moshe, the B'diyev of Das Moshe. This is a deep point. I don't want to go into it because that's not the Iker thing, but uh, maybe in the oven, that's, that's something to think about. Okay, but bottom line. Bottom line is this. They made a mistake. Because the Kaddish Baruch Hu said, I could do it all. Is it impossible for me to make sure that this that Moshe Rabbeinu was going to die before going to Eretz Yisrael should be Mekuyam, and at the same time you should still have him with you, that that should also be Mekuyam? Is it beyond me? Just because you, Bechit Soinius, based on the very first piece that we learned tonight, Bechit Soinius, think that it seems impossible? The whole Indian of Eretz Yisrael is Pneumius. The whole Indian of Eretz Yisrael is the understanding that there's taking place in the world things beyond what our physical eyes are able to see. By Hashem, there's no such thing as a stira. Kaddish Baruch Hu is a kol yachal. Kol olam yachad. Kaddish Baruch Hu could bring everything together and make things happen. Where two truths, two things can be true at once, mamish, even though they appear contradictory. Eilu ve'eilu diver the kimchai. And that's, that's in, in the aspect of Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu drew down from the place of Shemayim. That's why it's called a machloikis l'shem shamayim, right? Where you can have elu ve'elu diver the kimchayim l'shem shamayim because it's drawing from the place of of shamayim. The ain't need sarich le'atzas adam, and a kadosh baruch hu says, "I don't need your cheshbin. Thank you for trying to cheshbin for me." Says Hashem, "I want you to go into Eretz Yisrael now, and trust me that if this is what I want, you're not going to lose." You're not going to lose. And this is where Amuna comes in by Aminu Bashem, Uba Moshe Abda. But over here, they lacked it. And this is actually, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Yan lo hemantem di. He refers to the Pagam of the Maraglam as a Pagam and Amuna. What was the Pagam and Amuna? The Pagam and Amuna is this that HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't need our Cheshboinus. Even when a person has a Cheshbon, no, 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 no. This is going to be better for my Ruchnius if I. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said something. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows what he's doing. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu could make that whatever benefit you thought you would have gotten by cutting this corner or by doing this thing and not being Yashar and so on and so forth, HaKadosh Baruch Hu could bring it into existence and can manifest it regardless. There's no tarta de sasri. The ain't sarich la'atzas adam. I don't need your eitzes. Be'im hayorit sainai. Be'chayi moishe. If I wanted Moshe Rabbeinu to live, lo yehoi abiyas ha'aretz soysel, is that trust me, says the Kaddish Baruch Hu, you going into Eretz Yisrael, even while preserving this, that Moshe Rabbeinu needed to die before that, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have prevented that from happening, for Moshe Rabbeinu to continue to live on. In what sense? Because Moshe Rabbeinu is eternal. And going into Eretz Yisrael would have been eternal. And it would have been constantly manifesting that place of Lamalam and Azman, where Moshe Rabbeinu didn't die in the past and no longer exists. It would have channeled the Indian of Haya Haya the Indian of Lamalam and Azman, where the Neshamas of the Tzadikim, based on the Zara Kaddish, the Zara tells us that the Tzadikim are found in this world after they die, after the Nestalic, even more than they were when they were living. It wouldn't have blocked it, it wouldn't have prevented it. To go in, you could have channeled that Indian of Lamalami Tamadas. You could have channeled that Indian of unconditional, of something that is beyond the mind's ability to grasp. Lamalam and Amakam, Lamalam and Azman. Baharaya. And he says, you know what the Raya to this is? What do you think? Yeshua and Kali were the only ones that were out of the loop that they didn't understand exactly what was about to happen if Am Yisrael would go in. You don't think you don't think that Yeshua cared at least as much as the rest of the Miraculum that he was about to lose his Rebbe Muvak if they would go ahead and follow this that Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted them to go in? But they went. Yeshua and Kali, you know, had more of a reason to want Yeshua, Moshe Rabbeinu to continue to live. 
they went in a way of simplicity. They didn't come up with a plot and a plan to go ahead and to manipulate things and to come up with a with a fancy eitz and a kabbalistic cheshbon of why we have to break this thing and 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 circumvent this and a, and and to enter into a yerida let's ali and all these shtuyot. None of that. To go besamin to try the best that we can to be a yashar and a tamlev with a muna in the tzaddik and a muna in a kodesh baruch to do as best as we can without trying to cheshbon. Even lishma without trying to cheshbon. And ultimately, it was Yeshua and Kali that made it, and the Miraglim did it, because they were the ones that went between us. That because they went with simplicity, and they didn't have any frum cheshbainus or eitzes that this is going to be better for my avodas Hashem if I go ahead and I'm not so careful in, in in financial things and in business. It's going to be better because then I have more money to be no cheshbin, no cheshbin yashrus. Hagodesh Baruch Hu doesn't need our help. Yashrus, even if it appears to us that if we were to cut a corner, it would be better for our avodas Hashem. Hashem says, "Leave it to me." You do what you need to do. The Raya, Yeshua and Kali. They were the only ones that got into Eretz Yisrael because they were the only ones that didn't try to scam the system. It's a pella of a teaching. And when you put all three things together, and with this we'll wrap it up, when you put all these three teachings together, it combines to form a Mahalach HaChaim. In Eretz Yisrael, Dika Mahalach of really rooting ourselves in what we refer to in the context of the Lost Princess Principles program, Principle number one, at our core, we are holy. To, to move into that identity of that absolute certainty of who we are b'shoirish in an unconditional sense. And all of a sudden, when we begin living with those eyes to see the panemius of ourselves, we begin to see the panemius of the Torah. We begin to see the panemius of, 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 of life. We begin to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu in everything, everywhere, that he doesn't need to be contacted long distance. He's imminent. He's in every particle of physicality. Where, wherever we fall, we fall into his arms. Trust in him. It builds our amuna to be able to literally live a life of Eretz Yisrael, a life of Pinimias. And like we say so often, it makes no difference where you are physically found. Rabbi Nachman says in Torah Samach Zayin and Tinyana, there's a, there's a moich in the Eretz Yisrael and there's a moich in the Chutz La'aretz. There's a mentality of Eretz Yisrael and there's a mentality of Chutz La'aretz. And you can be living physically in Eretz Yisrael and have the mentality of Chutz La'aretz. And you can be physically living in Chutz La'aretz and have the mentality of Eretz Yisrael. It's a derech hachaim. It's a derech to Eretz Yisrael. It's the derech of finding the premiums in life, not to see dangerous, scary situations on the on the surface and refrain from, from going forth, to go ahead with confidence, like the viceroy in the story of the lost princess, Eilich Va'anase, to do with, with, with Tmimos, with Pshitos. That's Mamash what Yeshua did, right? Despite facing those soldiers standing there outside the palace, right? Moshe Rabbeinu can't go in. You're not going to be able to learn anything from him. It's not going to work out long term. Eilich Va'anasi, Yeshua and Khalif said, Toiva Ha'aretz, Ma'oid, Ma'oid, we're not going to lie about this. We're going to tell the MS, we're not going to try to manipulate, we're not going to try to cut corners and move things around in our lives, but to go in the way that we know Bepinimius we're supposed to go, and HaKadosh Baruch will do the rest. And even if the outcome doesn't appear to us to have been the best in whatever circumstance, that's where Amuna comes in. Our hishtadlis is to do what we know that we're supposed to do and to stay away from trying to be an oiber chacham. Like Rabbi Nachman says, meturnished ibertracht. And don't overthink. Think. Don't overthink. Think. Come up with a plan and go without, without, without cheshbonus. So, v'siyat reshmaya, we should really be able to be mamik. I hope over Shabbos, if you have the, it will send out the PDFs, meaning that the source is printed out Go through it again because these tires are so sweet. They're so deep. They're so real. So, so try to review them. And there's even more nuances that I didn't get into just for time constraints. These are very, very deep ideas. So try, you know, a little bit to go over. If you have the svarim, if you're have the svarim, I bless us that we should own these svarim. We talked about svarim in our in, in our um in our in our sikhas a lot going on. A sikhas in the beginning of the week, Baruch Hashem, to own the svar, and how could a Jewish house not have a svasemes? It's chayiv, it's a chayiv, right? To, to have a svasemes. And a shiloh, certainly, that a person should be able to review these teachings, but to really, more than just knowing them and have the intellectual joy of experiencing something true and something beautiful and something deep and something new, a chiddush, 
but we should be zeichel to bring it into our hearts and into our homes, to start to apply these ideas, not to be afraid by the big giants of the promised lands of our lives, to look beyond that, to realize that it has nothing to do with our deserving, our of our earning Eretz Yisrael. We have a kesher to that place. And that the chet of the Moroccan was this, that they didn't go betmimus. And the ultimate tmimus is a skashris to tzaddikim, that the tzaddik could channel things from above time, like kolzman ve'es only mitachas ha'shemayim, not above shemayim. And that ultimately the das of the rav is to simply follow the Aetis of the Rav. Not once we understand it, just do the Aetis. And then you're Mechabal the Das of the Tzadig. We should be zeichel to all of this and much, much more to have a beautiful, wonderful, Zis, Lichtig, illuminated Shabbos, Kodesh, up ahead, Vesiyat Shmaya, and what a privilege. So thank you so, so much for joining. And uh, actually, I'll just, if anybody has any questions, just in the last two minutes that we have left, um, the floor is open. If somebody wants to chime in. And if not, that's, that's totally fine as well. Yeah, the recording of Hashem is sent out on the LPI um, WhatsApp. You can you can go to lpitorah.org if you want to subscribe. If you're not uh, if you're not on it, okay, amazing, good. I guess that means that it was clear. You're so befuddled, you don't even know what to ask. <laughs> I don't know, but I hope that it's the it's the former and not the latter. Okay, wishing everybody the most beautiful, beautiful Shabbos. Thank you so much for joining, Kaltiv. Thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful Shabbos.